Well, hey guys, welcome back to Zeal Cigar Review. We're going to take it down a notch. And then we're going to take it up a notch because we're talking about the top five Christmas movies that shouldn't be Christmas movies according to everybody else out there in the culture. And I bet you can guess what my number one is. All next on the Zeal Cigar Review. Now, these are Christmas movies, okay, that uh, aren't necessarily... Christmas movies. Now, I say that because they weren't maybe put out at Christmas or anything else like that, but they all have Christmas themes and they may circulate in your holiday watching experience from time to time. So, these are our top five Christmas, non Christmas movies that we think deserve a cigar and a little bit of bourbon. So, just to tell them what we're drinking today, man. It's Fresh Crack it's, uh, it's, Wednesday. It's going to be a lot of bourbon Friday. for this one. It's bourbon. It's bourbon. Okay. No, it's so bourbon. it's a uh, it's wild turkey rare breed barrel proof rye. I don't know oh, if we've had okay. this or not, but. Okay. I think we may never have had this. Maybe we did. Uh, maybe it's on the other channel because YouTube took it down. I don't but know. Uh, this one's definitely going to be 18 and over for you guys who are 18 and over because we're drinking alcohol and smoking cigars. And we're violating at least 15 of uh, the community standards here mm. at. Uh, uh, on YouTube, no, so here we go. <clears throat> Ooh, this got some. This got a little bit of bite to it. Oh, I can smell it, but it smells really good. So we'll tell you the cigars we're gonna smoke, and we're gonna tell you the uh, movies after that. So we have a, we've got a couple, uh, <laughs> a couple cigars here that we think uh, deserve this video, just by nature that every single movie we're gonna talk about has a twist of fate in it. So they were smoking twisted fate cigars, and uh, JB, you're smoking the what? The box press, the, what do we call it, the pillar? The pillar. It, it's kind of like a pillar. It could it be is. a pillar. It could hold something up. I'm actually smoking the Masterpiece, which is actually really, really good and delicious and should pair incredibly with this Wild Tricky Rare. So, But the only way to figure that out, if it really does pair, and to get in a video finally, is to do something we named a podcast after, which was a fine suggestion by actually one of you guys. We got to cut light in. Smoke. I actually prefer the big box press. Over Do you really? The, over that. I think that's actually I, a little bit uh, of a stronger cigar, and this has a little bit more of like a what? marshmallowy sweetness. Dude, this has the marshmallowy sweetness. I think it's this one. You're on crack cocaine. You gotta stop that because I'm telling Kevin you right now. Kevin said the same thing. Yeah, I'm, this one produces more. It no, does. No, that this had more sweetness. Kevin has no idea what he's talking about. I'm telling I'm you this right saying. now. I'm telling you this right now. That's 2v1 right now. Okay, I'm telling you right now. If you've had the Twisted Fate, Masterpiece, or the Pillar, tell us in the comment section which one produces this more sweet flavor. I think it's the Sweet Marshmallows, the small one. He thinks it's with the big one. I like both of them. This is what I prefer, though. So, let's get into it. Let me address something about this cutter real quick. Everyone thinks I was paid by Screw Pop to say that. Did you know that? Really? Yeah, comments are like crazy. You've literally never talked about that cutter, and it's been in the shop since I've been here. I, I use it all the time, years. don't I? Yeah, I, I use it all it, the like, time. It went missing for a while, and then I found it, and then it kind of went was used for a while, and then you like didn't use it for a while. I'm not and then paid by anybody to say anything, dude. I say what I want to say, dude. I like smoking barber poles at Christmas because it's kind of like a candy cane. You okay. get a different kind of flavor. I hear you. I hear you. That's so, a good one. Uh, I do one. like smoking barber poles at Christmas. Okay, I get that. Sweet, creamy, I'm telling you right now. Mm. A little nutty. It's very, very good. And this actually has a... Oh, yeah, they're so good. This actually has a, a Connecticut and a Habano wrapper. Isn't that correct? Mm. I think it's Connecticut or Maduro. Connecticut, I think Maduro. It's a Maduro. It's a Maduro wrapper. I think it's our sanitarium... <clears throat> I think it's the sanitarium Maduro in Connecticut, actually. Oh, okay, okay. This does come. This does come from the same uh, maker of Sanitarium cigars, but it's much creamier, much smoother than like your mind blown. Yeah. My, liking it to like the uh, the Habano, the yeah. Habano Sanitarium. Yeah, mm. it is a little more peppery, and I remember, so I'll give you that. A little more peppery. Mm. Yeah. See, in this one, I didn't. I remembered when I smoked this the first time, I didn't really enjoy it. Mm. And then I smoked it the second time, and I was like, eh. And then I got the like right here, and I was like, oh my goodness, I love this thing. And now I smoke them all the time. That smoke, bro. That smoke I, is delicious. It absolutely is delicious. I don't know if wild turkey is going to be my choice of drink for, mm -hmm. for Christmas, but I am interested to see how it's going to pair with this. Oh, wow. It's very good. The one thing I like about this is that the smoke is so dense and so rich, and it really is good. You can just see it pluming. Now it's time to pair a cigar with the... Uh, this is, this is 112 Perfect. proof, by the way. I'm just letting you know before you before you start asking is, for for more pours. This is the this is the this is the last video we'll do today. <laughs> Both sleeping in the back. 
It tastes 112 proof. It's got some kick to it, bro. It's got a... What's that tape? What is that, though? It's got something sweet on it, but there's a there's some burn. Man. But Taste that with the sweet. cigar. Smoke the cigar. See what happens. Really? Oh, I'm telling oh, you right no. now. It's pancakes. It's 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 drizzled honey pancakes. I'm mad because I had pancakes this morning. I'm t- just go ahead. Smoke it. See what happens. Woohoo. Man, that's that's so delicious. What a great pairing. I'd pair this any day. I'd absolutely pair this any day. Honey drizzled pancakes. That's what I have. Sweet honey with some nuttiness on there. Kind of some nuttiness. You know, I really think it's very, very good. You taste what I'm talking about? Got some nuts on there with some pancake. Pancakes, some honey on it. Not maple syrup. I'm talking, I'm talking honey. Because the smoke's so dense, I might even lean more waffle than pancake. Mm. Or French toast, maybe. Yeah, that... that Sweet, rich. But it's not as toasty, so that's why I'm thinking more waffle. Okay, I can. I'll go with that. Okay, I'll yield. I'll yield. <laughs> I'll yield to that. I think that's a very good comparison. Pancake fits too. Mm-hmm. But I think it's a little bit more like a like that. Like a hotel waffle. Yeah, but like it's a not hotel that, waffle. Yeah, it's a like yeah, little bit dude. of sweetness in that, like almost like a Belgian waffle with mm. like some nice vanilla and cinnamon in it. Without the cinnamon, though, I don't really get a lot dude, of cinnamon. Dude, the denseness on the smoke. What is going on with this cigar? Loving it. Loving it. All Let's right. Let's talk so, about the topic for today. The topic almost, for, I almost forgot. I was so into this cigar. And <laughs> it's, the a very, it's a very, very good cigar. Uh, Twisted Fate. It's he's, a, smoking, he's smoking the pillar. I'm smoking the masterpiece. And uh, it's just a, delicious. Very, very, very good cigar. All right. So let's get into it. So the top five non-Christmas Christmas movies. Let's start with the bottom of the barrel. Start with number five. What's number five? Now, keep this in mind. These Christmas movies are Christmas non Christmas non Christmas movies that deserve a cigar and a bourbon when you watch them. All right, start with number five, JB. Take 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 me to it. You're gonna have to explain this one. Full Metal Jacket. Full Metal Jacket, dude. Yes, I f- it's an absolute like, Christmas non Christmas movie. But there's like no Christmas spirit in that, is there? Yes, like, there is. Is there? Are you kidding me? When the drill sergeant? Okay, that Maybe guy's got the spirit. Bit. That guy's got the yeah, spirit. He's got something. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, one of the reasons that comes up continually on list as a Christmas non Christmas movie is like the second part of the movie. The first part of the movie is all boot camp. If you've seen it, the second part of the movie is during the Tet Offensive. It takes takes place in the Vietnam War okay. during Tet Offensive, which happened during Christmas. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so it, essentially, the North Viet, Vor, Vietnamese uh, who were warned against, uh, they broke the treaty. They broke they broke the peace. Oh. Okay. And they, they attacked us you know, during Tet, which is their you know our Christmas time, their holiday. So. Uh, all that said, that's the, and my and you know the reason I know that my dad was over in Vietnam and you know it's just one of those things that I I remember seeing in the movie and the Christmas stuff was up and everything like that. But uh, other than that, that's just kind of the only thing. So of mm. all everything list, that's kind of at the very bottom of the list because uh, it happened. You know, the second part of the movie happened during the Tet Offensive, and uh, it, it's a crazy, crazy great movie. Other than that, it's great. It's the only movie my dad ever watched and said that's more like. I remember the Marines being like, you know, when he had to go through Marine boot camp after going through Naval boot camp because he's a corpsman. Um, what, what are you doing here, Dude, look at the freaking hairs on this, bro. What, what are you doing? You're interrupting the video for Look hair. at these hairs. What are you doing? Do you see those? No, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, it's beautiful. Show the there's camera. Like cri- there's like little the hairy camera. crystals on this. Oh, oh, I do see that. Right? Oh, dude, that's crazy. I don't know if you can. I don't know if you, you got to hold your hand behind it. Can you see the little hairy crystals on that? I don't know if you can see it with the naked eye there, especially if you're watching on like oh, a, a little oh, bit. A little bit. I don't know if you can see it, but on that wrapper, it's got a little bit of plume on it. Just the starts, uh, the start of plume. Full Metal Jacket is number five. What's your number five? Give me your top five. Drop it in the comment section below. That's your number five. JB, number four. A Long Kiss Goodnight. Oh, man. What are you doing back here? Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel Jackson and uh, God, what was her name? Gina Davis. Gina Davis. Yeah, dude. She she ends up like I don't know if I've seen she was that. she was like a spy. She ended up like hitting her head or was in some kind of car accident and becomes like a housewife and everything. And then one day she like wakes up these awesome skills she has. She's like cutting up stuff and she cuts it really really qu- quick with a knife and then throws like an apple up in the air and throws a knife through it and it sticks in the door. And her husband's like, "What is that?" And she's like, "I don't know, but I think I'm good with knives." You know, so it's pretty amazing when when it comes down to it. So, so why does Christmas come into that? It happens during Christmas time. 
Happens during Christmas time, and it's it's all throughout the movie during Christmas time when okay. she like wakes up and recognizes it, and then she fights off terrorists. And it's an awesome movie. It's an old movie, as well as you know, Full Metal Jacket for the young bucks out there. Go watch these two movies so you know a little bit more about the older culture. I just I don't feel I don't feel like the 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 title gives that movie the justice that you're giving it in the description of 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 the the movie. That's because your generation feels things. It doesn't just think. You need to have a brain to think. Yeah, so you need to think with You put brain. me in a category that I don't fit into. You don't fit in that category, but you're saying things like, I don't feel like, I don't, nobody cares about feelings. Long Kiss Goodnight. Long Kiss, the long kiss. It's a great movie. It's awesome. Sounds Go like check it rom-com. out. Sounds like a rom-com. It's not a rom com. If I it's know, a rom com, title sounds like a rom com. My wife loves it though. My wife loves it. So my wife, my, my wife and I watch it every Christmas. I'll watch Full Metal Jacket year round because uh, it fits inside Christmas and it fits outside. But number three is undebatable as a Christmas non Christmas movie. JB, tell me number three. Dude, Lethal Weapon, bro. Lethal Weapon. Now I know you young bucks are out there looking at my gray, I know I'm gray crazy. beard. I know. See, dude, that's the crazy thing, man. These young bucks. What What's he doing? He grabs his eyes all back. <laughs> all the young bucks out there just look at us like we're crazy old men right now because they've probably does, never seen these movies. Like Lethal Weapon, that's when Mel Gibson was at his peak. Does anybody right? look crazier than Mel Gibson, though? No, no. If you really want to get into movies and you really want to like up your game, you've got to absolutely watch Lethal Weapon. You're gonna, there's like four of them now. The first one takes takes place during Christmas. It's it's Mel Gibson's kind of coming coming out movie. It's an amazing movie. He becomes a star in Hollywood. It's in the 80s, like like early 90s, Danny late Glover. 80s. Danny Glover's in there. I mean, it's just incredible. It really is. So go watch it. It's action-packed. Back when like movies had real explosions and not everything was CGI. All right, now we're getting into some agreeable non-Christmas Christmas movies that everybody there should have watched by now. And if you haven't watched this, I'm going to pray for your soul because you need to go back and watch these movies, okay? The next one, number two, JB, number two is, of course... Don't feed them after midnight, bro. Don't feed them after midnight. That's everyone's favorite. Dude, those gremlins, bro. The gremlins. Number two is, of course, the movie Gremlins. Okay? Dude, I wish... That's one of the few cars that I wish that I could just put a stupid engine in, and when people and you roll be able up, to do that, and they're yeah. like, gremlin? And you're just like, wheelie. Oh, dude. Uh, the, the, the <laughs> gremlins are we're not talking about the car. We're talking about the movie. So, the movie Gremlins. I'm telling you what. I mean, we got, we got Gizmo. Gizmo. Okay, Gizmo, he gets a little wet, gives gives birth to a bunch of other ones. Spike's in there. Okay, Spike, the good I haven't seen that movie in so long. I'm telling you what to watch it. That one creepy moment does when he Does that all hears, happen during Christmas? Yeah, it does. The whole thing does. Like, there's this Damn. one part in the movie where all of a sudden he goes, you hear the song, the 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 other mis, mis, mischievous gremlins drop the record needle, and you hear, do you hear what I hear? <laughs> As things like are bumping all over the place. It's an incredible That's movie. Right. You can't feed him after midnight. You can't get him wet. And that's what happens, and it blows up the movie. I'm not going to ruin it for you, you young bucks out there. You go right now, and you absolutely go watch that movie. Now, all the old heads out there, like myself, all the 40 and overs, you drop the comment below right now. Just stop right what you're doing, okay, and go right now and comment, do you remember seeing that movie for the first time? Do you remember what you felt when you saw the movie for the first time? And do you remember looking into your bed about 4,000 times before you went to bed when you were 9 years old, like me? I was getting ready to say, I feel like I remember it being kind of creepy. It's like a horror movie, dude. Yeah. It's a horror movie. It's Gremlins is kind of scary. I mean, not nearly as scary as the movies coming out today, but like for back for in like time, the 80s, oh, yeah. it was terrifying. Well, yeah, because terrifying, a, yeah. a little creature showing up at your house is plausible. Oh, yeah. You know? But so is Chucky. <laughs> a child's play. Oh, Chucky. I'll drink to that. <laughs> getting back into the cigar, though, man. This is, I mean... This is so good of a pairing. It should be legal. It's so good. Honey, honey drenched Belgian waffles with some nice, let's just say like walnuts on there. I mean, just so good in so many different ways. Oh. I don't even know if I'd go walnut. It might be like a sweeter nut than that. Ch chestnuts? Roasting? Over. By an open fire, maybe? I don't know. Cashews. Yeah. I can, yeah, I can see cashews. Like a creamy cashew. A creamy okay. cashew. Oh, look at that. Creamy cashews. Okay. Belgian waffles. Put a little butter on there. Drizzle a little honey. That's a great breakfast right there. I swear, breakfast if, champions. If, if any cigar remotely resembles pancakes, that's that's the only time that you start freaking out about flavors. I'm serious, dude. 
But, I mean, tell me I'm wrong. No, you're not. It's really good. He's not wrong. It's a very, very good pairing. This has got to be your Christmas mor- morning uh, cigar and drink. Christmas morning? Christmas oh, you morning. You're getting started early. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Dude, Christmas in my house. Five o'clock somewhere. Christmas in my house goes all year round, just so you understand this. Not only is my wife married to Santa Claus, but there's a real reality that we play Christmas music year round. He does. I really do. J- JB can vouch for that. My sisters. It's your fault that I didn't go all year last year with, I almost went 365 days without hearing Mariah Carey's Christmas. Any yeah. any of her songs. Yeah. And you played it like the last, like. I didn't play it. It, it accidentally oh, came up on, like on a I asked, I asked Amazon to skip every single time because it's just, it's horrible. So when I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm it listening wasn't to music. Skipped, it, but but I, I had to hear it. But I got into it. I mean, you can, you can listen to it once. That's the free pass. I mean, the man card is, you know, a little bit malleable at that point. But, I mean, you can listen to it once. Apparently, once. it's that's a thing in, in the UK. Yeah. There's a song in the UK that they try to dodge and everybody tries to not listen to during the Christmas season. I forget what it is, but it's similar to Mariah Carey's. That and that one by George Michael. Last Christmas. Gave you my that's the Mariah Carey one. No, that's not Mariah Carey. My, Mariah Carey is all I want for Christmas is you. Doesn't See? she do Last Christmas? No, too? that's George Michael. Somebody else does it. Some just, other female artist does Last Christmas. You just gotta have faith. <laughs> You're sick. Right. Number one, the number one Christmas movie that really should be up there with like Miracle on 34th Street, you know, A Christmas Story, and everything else. Is a Christmas movie. Somehow that's debated in the cigar realms, in every other realm on the internet, is of course the number one Christmas movie of all time. Please, JB, tell the fine people at home. Apparently it's Die Hard. It is Die Hard. The number one Christmas movie of all time is of course Die Hard. It's a great movie, Christmas through and through. John McClane is defending Christmas against the terrorist taking it away, Hans Gruber, right? That's essentially the whole movie right there. That's the whole movie. They want to steal Christmas. They want to steal holiday cheer from just the Nakatomi Tower. People are in there just having a great time, enjoying Christmas party like they are. They're celebrating Jesus' birth. There's nothing going wrong. All is right with the world. And what happens with Hans Gruber? He comes in, stirs up the hornet's nest, and Bruce Willis answers the call. He basically is Jesus in that movie, saving the world from their sins. Name me another metaphor that is more biblical than that. That might be a little off. <laughs> that might be just a little bit off. I mean, I'm just saying that, you know, there's there's a little bit of, you know, that's not really correct theology, but, you know, it's for the sake of humor. We'll go ahead and go go with it. But Tell me about it. You, you, I, I got a bonus one. Okay. Go ahead. Go, go, go. You give me your give me your bonus. I'll give you my bonus. Okay, we agreed on these five, but now we're to JB's bonus. bonus. All right, here we go. Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh yeah, I, I've I've heard people like because it's like I mean it is kind. Of, I mean it's based around Christmas, but it's Halloween. like a Halloween this movie. Is Halloween. Yeah, right? that is true. Nightmare Before. That's a that when that came out, it came out a long time ago, dude. Freaking long time, dude. Bruh. They made that out of clay. Yeah, and it was it was creepy <laughs> cool. when it came out. It, it still is. A it, bit it's creepy. it's pretty creepy, Mr. right? Mr. Oogie Boogie Man. Bro. I know, dude. I mean, it's 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 a little. I mean, I don't say that's a kids movie. I didn't let my kids watch that till they were teenagers. Really? Yeah, yeah it was kind of creepy. That might my, my kids watch this movie called Caroline. Caroline. Oh, yeah, it was really uh, it's, creepy. It's, it's Tim Burton. Is it really? Yeah, it's still. I think that was Tim Burton as well. They got they got really freaked out over that movie as well. And I, I never saw it. Is it scary? Is it scary? Have you seen it? I have not seen it. No. Yeah, I've not seen it. My kids freak out over it though. Camden, Madeline, and Savannah are all just like, that's crazy. And Savannah's here next Tuesday, mm. which is pretty exciting. So we'll have Savannah on on and catch her up and how she's been in Tennessee and everything else like that. But uh, my bonus. My bonus. Bonus Jonas? My bonus. The Jonas bonus? My bonus is not what you would expect from a bearded, cigar-smoking, bourbon hound like myself. Every Christmas, because I have two daughters, and the women outweigh the men, you know, in my house, three to two, sometimes we just got to let it go. We got to let it go. We, we, we just have to let it go. So Frozen, Frozen is my bonus one. If you have daughters like me and you love your daughters, you're going to take one for the team, sit down in front of the television, and you will be singing, let it go. Your daughters weren't let that it young go. when that Yeah, came they was. Out. Yeah, they were. Yeah, when they came out, yeah, they were both like 
I think Savannah was in junior high and Madeline was in uh, middle school. That has not right. been out that long. Yes, it has, dude. It's, a, it's no. an old movie. At most four years. Go look at it. Go look at it right now. I'm going to tell you right now. Go look at it. I'm going to show you right now why I am the best dad in the entire world. Now, take one on the chin to watch that dumb movie, Frozen, with my girls. And I'll get choked up every time. So, But it's because I love my little girls. What would it come out, bro? 2013. 2013, right? So, 10 years ago. Yeah, that's Holy a long time ago. Yeah. It came yeah, out Madeline, 10 years ago? So, Savannah was 12, Holy all right? And Madeline shit. was like, what? I mean, eight. I did not know that, that was point. 12 years ago. Right? I told you, bro. That's a long time ago. If you're huh. dad like me and you got girls, you take one for the team and you go watch some chick flicks. Frozen is your bonus chick flick from myself to you. So I totally thought that was at least five years further from that. Mm -mm. Like 2019, 2018. Mm. It's an old movie. 2013. It's an wow. old movie, dude. It's an old movie, dude. Hmm. So, I mean, 10 year olds now rediscovering it, you know, and it came yeah, out. So who's the millennial now? Yeah, I'm right. <laughs> so here we go. What are your favorite Christmas, non-Christmas movies? Drop them in the comment below. And have you had the Twisted Fate masterpiece or pillar? JB, tell me how that thing's turning out for you. Are you still on your waffle kick or is it transitioning into something else for you? There's something in this bourbon that I'm trying to find and I can't find it. I don't know what it is, but it's so good. But it's a heavy hitter. Um, okay. This thing, though. Ooh, so good. I mean, the, the bourbon with a cigar together, I'm telling you what. It's like you went to a hotel, you had a great night's sleep, you slept like a baby, you get up in the morning and you go down to the the, the free breakfast and they have waffles pre-made for you and they're Belgian and they're fluffy and they're awesome. Then they're drizzled with honey and they've got some really nice cashews crushed up over it with some butter and they just drizzle some more honey over that butter and then you eat it and it's the most satisfying breakfast you ever had. That's what it's like to smoke this and drink this together. That's my thought. It's just so creamy, man. Yep. Just like a, a fluffy marsh, like a marshmallow, like that marshmallow fluff that you put on your peanut butter sandwich. Okay. I can go with that. Marshmallow fluff. Yeah. Marshmallow fluff. So here's my thought for you guys. Oh, sorry. I'm, I stopped. I've but. never put the marshmallow fluff on a waffle, but I kind of want to now. I think what we're going to do, so this is what happens every, every Christmas. Let's tell them our tradition. We have traditions now. You do? Gonna, no, we, we do. You, we do. We do? We, we, what do we do every Christmas Eve, JB? What do we do? Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve at Zeal. There's only two people working here at Zeal. Oh, yeah. At Christmas Eve. Who's that? That's you and me. It's me and you. And what do we do? We get here early. Yeah. It's like it's like our Christmas. We celebrate Christmas together. L last year, I think I streamed. You did. Okay, so what we do streamed, we do? We Tell streamed, them what we do. We streamed Call of Duty. Tell them what we do. Tell them what we do. Dude, we game, bro. Yeah, we do. Just goof off. We're going to game and goof off. So he's going to set up back here. I'll set up in front or vice versa. And we lock the door for a little bit. We get here early. We open up. We're only open for like, what, four hours or something like that? And uh, it's great. So we game. But this year, what I say we do is we make a video and we go live with everybody. And we have waffles with marshmallow and everything else on it. And then we try smoke the cigar with it and see how it actually pairs with the cigar. What do you think? I think it's a great idea. Hey, we can do it. Waffles it is. So stay tuned for the Christmas Eve version of this cigar and this bourbon in waffle form. With that said, guys, we're out of here like last year. Peace.